hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Unpacking Possibility. I'm your host, Tracy Stein. As always, I'm so happy to be here with you today. You are so going to enjoy our guest today, Krithi Jen. She is wonderful. I'm going to tell you a little bit about her and then we'll kind of get into the heart of what we want to talk about. So Krithi is an incoming counseling psychology PhD student with a deep rooted passion for promoting LGBTQ plus mental health and well-being. She recently earned a master's degree from Columbia University, yay, uh, with a specialization in spirituality and mind-body practices. Committed to exploring minority mental health through a lens of wholeness, Krithi seeks to shift the narrative from black to empowerment. As a proud queer woman of color, Krithi recognizes the unique strengths that come with existing in the margins of society. She firmly believes in celebrating and harnessing these strengths to empower marginalized individuals within the LGBTQ plus and BIPOC communities, supporting them in leading meaningful and fulfilling lives. Beyond her academic pursuits, Krithi is a certified wellness coach. Her expertise in self-compassion interventions allows her to work closely with clients helping them to silence their inner critics and embrace positive lifestyle changes. She's dedicated to empowering individuals on their wellness journey, fostering resilience, and creating spaces where authenticity thrives. Krithi, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited for this. It's great. You know, you're doing such important work. And... I love that you're really talking about strengths of the communities that you are part of. And so today I want to talk a little bit more. Um, I want everybody to learn more about your work specifically um, and what inspired you to focus on this particular area. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I can talk a bit about my research and like where my research interests come from. So my goal with my research currently is to integrate positive psychology with social justice. Um, Cause so much of the work being done in this area so far has emphasized so much on the negative aspects of holding a marginalized identity. And while that is extremely important to like inform policy or, you know, quote unquote, legitimize people's experiences, um, I think it's equally important to kind of show the whole picture, right? As uh, women, as people of color, as LGBTQ people, we have so much more to our experience than the experience of discrimination and stigma. We lead meaningful lives. We have so many strengths, and, and I want my research to kind of focus on that. Um, and most recently, what I've become interested in is the construct of authenticity, especially within the LGBTQ plus community. Um, because if you think about it, as queer and trans people, we are constantly told that our existence is invalid and wrong. And despite that, we choose to be true to ourselves, right? And that requires self-awareness, that requires trust, like with our inner self and I think all these strengths are so important to even like inspire everyone else so I, I think I, I would really like to kind of explore that more oh, it's so important everything you said of course is spot on um you know I'm wondering if you had any sort of aha moment or a moment where you're like this is what I want to devote my my career to and my energy to mm -hmm. yeah so when I kind of look back at my life so far I feel like the kind of work that I'm doing right now and what I'm interested in it it, it just makes sense uh because like growing up my parents always taught me to kind of take control of my happiness and you know, practice gratitude and appreciate everything that's around me. And that kind of shaped me into this person that's like kind of optimistic and sees the positive things in life. But at the same time, I hold these different minority identities. And I know that it's not always an option to choose where 
like to choose what happens to us, right? Because society imposes these certain barriers for us that we have to kind of face. So for me, it made kind of it made sense for me to bring in these perspectives into my work. However, I feel like it was kind of difficult to come to that realization, even though it feels like a natural um, progression in my journey. It, it did take some kind of searching for me to find that. And I would say what helped me come to this place is being able to let go of fear. So as, as you had mentioned, I'm starting my PhD this fall, right? Uh, this was my third time applying for PhD programs. So having faced rejection and failure, um, I really believe that you can learn a lot from that if you choose to. Uh, and what I had realized is the way I was approaching this entire process earlier was coming from a place of fear because for me at that moment, it felt like a PhD was like the only thing that I could do to progress my career. Right. So for me, in that point, it felt like I didn't have any other option. And because I was approaching it in that way, I think my partner helped me realize is that I felt like an imposter because I wasn't bringing my full self to the process. Um, and the third time around when I applied, um, I, I realized that there's much more to life than this one goal that I had set for myself. And and in that process, I was able to kind of let go of that fear. And that's when like things just clicked because then I was able to really dig into what felt meaningful for me. And, and this work just kind of made sense for me. Yeah. So interesting. You, you're bringing up so many things. So I'm trying to decide which one to ask you about first because, um, you know, you're, you're talking about, I mean, the one thing, first of all, I have to tell you, I'm like stunned that that you didn't get into your PhD of choice right away because you are so smart and so passionate and so focused mm -hmm. and so mature. I I think, you know, bad on, on those programs, they, they missed a great opportunity <laughs> to have you. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that completely genuinely. Um, because you are so passionate, you are so smart, you are so focused, and your work is so important. Like you said, there's been so much focus on, and, and again, like you said, the challenges of being in marginalized communities, and you know they are real, and we have to acknowledge them. But you know the strengths that you know it's 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 you know, when you started talking about this because I remember when I read your paper on this topic, I remember thinking, wow, like, why aren't more people talking about this? Um, so your work is so important and it's so timely. I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about the strengths that you have uncovered actually in your research that you really mm -hmm. want to highlight. Yeah, yeah. So when I first kind of discovered that I could, like, th that this kind of work is out there, it was when I read the research on LGB positive identity um, and basically in that work um, they've identified researchers have identified like five strengths that are kind of specific and unique to the queer experience right um, and that includes authenticity as I mentioned earlier and belongingness to a community right so because you're going through these shared experiences, you form these stronger bonds with a community, which obviously can bolster your mental health. And, and then there's also self-awareness, right? Because there's this constant process of self-reflection um, about your identity. And then I think there was also commitment to social justice, which I think is such an important one, right? Because you're, going through these experiences uh, of injustice yourself, you develop a sense of compassion and sensitivity to when other people face injustice, right? And, and that's why you see many queer people who are politically active in that sense. Um, and then also intimacy in relationships, right? Because you're sharing these experiences, even 
your partner is likely to share similar experiences with you, you're able to be more vulnerable in that setting and build strong your relationship through that time. So there's a lot of research out there already. Um, and I really want to look at like, these strengths are already there. How can we work with them to kind of help the community? So you have already explored that. So talk a little bit about what your thoughts are and your ideas are for, you know, bringing this work to the, the community in a way that it's really useful. Because I feel like a lot of times research stays almost like, you know, in this kind of, in this realm that is often inaccessible to most people, right? Most people aren't reading the right. research. Um, they're not necessarily going to academic talks. I mean, some people are, but a lot of people aren't. So yeah. how do you take, how do you take something and make it accessible and actionable? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think that's where like what I've learned from you kind of comes in of like when I took your practicum course and like um, learning how to develop and offer workshops. I think that kind of work is a direct translation of research to practice and I think that was one of the first experiences I had of doing that and I think what where I would like to go from here is to develop interventions similar to those um, uh, create offerings that are for the community and also informed by the community um, and are is also evidence-based um, to directly offer that to individuals um, yeah. Just a quick aside for anyone listening who doesn't know, Kriti was in my practicum at the Spirituality Mind Body Institute, housed at Teachers College, Columbia University, and, and your work was really so inspiring. You know, I can't take any credit for what you have produced because you really, I'm not kidding when I say you're so focused and so passionate and so clear. Um, and I love how you're ap applying positive psychology methods and that research mind to how to how to create meaningful interventions for LBGTQ plus and BIPOC communities. So, so let's talk about your workshop. Are there things that you found in your workshop that people really responded to? As mm -hmm. this feels meaningful, this feels helpful, or I know myself differently or I, I leave with a skill that feels like it's enriching and supportive in some way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think what was surprising for me what when we offered the workshop, Michelle and I, was that I think one of the most important thing for everyone was the sense of community that was built in the workshop, right? So like just having the space where we talk talk about spirituality and the LGBTQ experience together, uh, it, it just seemed like it was unique. Uh, because when we think, when we talk about spirituality uh, within this context, it's interesting because, because of its associations with religion, right? And how religious oppression has impacted the LGBTQ community. And because so many religious institutions are inaccessible to the community. It's important to create these spaces where spirituality can still be nurtured, right? So I think just, and that's already there, right? The, the participants already felt connected to something larger than them. It's just about creating that space where they can just kind of, um, you know, pursue that further and develop that further for themselves. It's, it, I'm, I'm so um, struck by what you're saying because absolutely there are many religious communities that are not welcoming um, or have their own kind of stuff that they still need to work out. I'm just going to be polite in the way I describe it, but, you know, spirituality is so much greater than that. It is, and it, and and inclusive. Right. So I'm curious, um, because I only know you as this very mature young woman 
um, and, you know, very focused and, you know, confident. But I'm wondering, are there things you would tell either like a, a young queer person coming up in life, you know, an adolescent or teen or young adult or even your younger self at that time that would be encouraging and supportive and, and kind of imp apply these positive psychology and spiritually informed principles that you're talking about mm -hmm. or just words yeah, of encouragement. I think, yeah, I think just leaning on your community, your loved ones and leaning on yourself is so important. Um, I think a person who really inspires me in this, in this, field is a Alokwede Menon. They're a non-binary activist, poet, comedian, and what they talk about is the reason that people find it so difficult to accept the LGBTQ community is because they find it difficult to accept themselves. Um, because what does queerness mean? It means falling outside of this structure that's imposed on us by society. Right? And that gives us a sense of freedom to be who we, who we are, who we truly are. And, and that can be uncomfortable, that can be scary, um, and people find that difficult to kind of confront that within themselves because we're constantly told to follow these rules. Um, so I think it's so important to just remember to be yourself and be who you are. And I think that is a way to inspire others to be themselves. And I love that you spoke earlier about seeking support and community and finding people who kind of kind of get it from the inside out. Right. Um, you know, I'm wondering about what people who are not themselves in the LGBTQ community, but want to be good allies can do? What are things that are important that people may not get? Mm, right. Yeah, I think when we think about allyship, people will often think that they have to like be politically active or like stand up for the community. I think what's really important when it comes to allyship is self-reflection um, and doing the work yourself. Um, and I can share an anecdote here, here, I think that kind of demonstrates this. So when I was kind of discovering my own queerness, um, there was this whole phase in my life that I thought that everyone is like bi or pan. Um, it, it was like the funniest thing. And I was like convinced that anyone who's, who identifies otherwise is like repressing their desires or something. And so I was sharing this kind of, you know, philosophy with my parents at some point. And their reaction was really interesting to me because they didn't question it. They didn't shut that down. But what they did was they took a moment and they thought about it for themselves, right? Like whether this, it felt like this applied to them. And then after a few moments, they were like, no, yeah, we're definitely straight. But like, I think that is that really demonstrates true allyship where you're able to kind of confront queerness and transness within yourself and be open to it because I think if you're open to that it's going to be really difficult to be hateful towards others um, and with respect to my own journey I eventually realized that okay maybe not maybe some people are actually straight and then <laughs> Uh, that's how I kind of discovered myself. Uh, but yeah, I just thought that's kind of funny. So, I mean, it sounds like what you're saying is like being willing to like listen wholeheartedly and be with somebody wholeheartedly and allow them to, you know, kind of take up conversational space and share their feelings and ideas without feeling like, you know, there needs to be any immediate move to opine or respond or anything, just having this kind of openness and respect. Um, yeah, and just in addition to that, like obviously, yes, giving the space and kind of truly 
be listening, uh, but also like engaging in that self-reflection process because I think you're a true ally when you're able to make those around you feel comfortable to be themselves by being your true self. Oh, so well said, really well said. I'm wondering, Creepy, are there organizations that are currently focused on some of the work that you are talking about that you would recommend? I'm thinking especially for, again, for young people. And, you know, just disclosure, we've talked about this. I don't know how many of my listeners know. It's probably not many. But um, so, you know, I have a number of queer and um, LGBTQ people in my friend circle and in my family including some young people and you know i've seen the struggles that you are alluding to um and so i feel like you know when you were talking about this and i read your paper i thought this is so important more people need to know this because i'm thinking like um just as kind of an aside you know you had parents who were very supportive sounds like and respectful and emphasized, you know, all of the the good things and positive things about who you are and what you can expect in your life. Um, That is, as you know, not always the case in people's families or people just feel kind of inept in terms of not knowing how to be supportive or they make attempts to be supportive and they just kind of are not helpful. Um, and I'm sure, you, I'm sure anybody listening could imagine a variety of scenarios where somebody can be less than helpful, whether intentionally or not. Mm-hmm. So when I think about what is helpful to young people, like I, you know, I'm, I'm asking also, it's not just theoretical, I'm asking thinking about people who are important to me. I'm finding it difficult to like think of specific organizations like off the top of my head right now. But like, I mean, like there are the common ones, like the, the Trevor Project, for example, I know that they do a lot of work for the community. Um, and I think that I mentioned Alok Wade Menon earlier. I think their kind of thoughts and ideas have just been so inspirational for me. And I think um, they really approach the work from this place of like empowerment. Um, yeah. And I guess relatedly, and not to put you on the spot, but are there books that you have found like really inspiring or helpful? Like you're like, oh, I wish everybody could read this book. Mm -hmm. Um, First book that comes to mind, All About Love by Bell Hook. Um, I think the way she kind of centers love um, as it, it within this context of like, you know, s- systemic oppression. I think it, it love is truly like the antidote to um, to all this like hatred and like discrimination and all of these uh, negative things that we experience. Um, and I think we all have this like innate capacity to be loving and kind. Um, and I just think about, you know, ways that, that we can really tap into that um, so I, th- I, I, that's why I'm like really connected to the work on self-compassion as well. Um, I think just, I think if all of us could kind of cultivate compassion within ourselves, then we would also be like compassionate towards others. 100%. Absolutely. I'm wondering, because I mean, you have such a wealth of knowledge and you're so passionate are, what have I not asked or what have we not talked about that we should be talking about? Yeah, um, I would say, so a friend recently reminded me of, you know, what, what does queerness mean? It means something unusual or different, right? So when we're talking about queerness in that sense, what's considered queer today is not going to be considered queer 20 years from now. And in that sense, this work is not just about helping a specific community. It is in part that, but I think it's bigger than that, where we need to learn to embrace differences and embrace 
our uniqueness. Um, and in that sense, like the work is not never going to end. And we constantly need to confront that, that discomfort and continue to discover ourselves in the process. Um, so I think that that's something that I would like to, for it to be like a takeaway from this conversation. Oh, that's really well said. I'm wondering, Kriti, what is the best way for people to, you know, keep up to date on your work and all of the great things you are going to be doing? And yeah, I think uh, anything that I, if I, if I'm offering any workshops or anything in the future, I would definitely update it on my LinkedIn. So if anyone is interested in the work that I'm doing or is interested in connecting, please, uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. Okay. And you'll provide me with that information and I'll put that in the show notes. Um, anything yeah. else that you would like to share? No, but thank you so much for this opportunity. I really enjoyed the conversation that we had. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and I enjoyed it as well. And, um, you know, again, I'm so in inspired at, at by and excited for you. Um, and I am looking forward to seeing all the great things you continue to do. Thank you so much. Uh, pleasure is mine. Um, so this has been another episode of Unpacking Possibility. If you like the show, feel free to like, share, follow, spread the word, leave me a comment. And as always, until next time, be well.